Okay, so for the past few days I've been uh, taking a look at some of the free video editing software for Windows system. Uh, I used to work professionally with Adobe Premiere, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, and I uh, worked a little bit with Final Cut when I was doing some college coursework for it, but on the Windows platform I was working with Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere Pro. So right off the bat, the screen capture software that I use is OBS. I'm not going to go into it too much, but I like it quite a bit. I'll see if I can put a link to it uh, in the description below so you can figure out uh, what you like to use. Going right off of the three softwares being reviewed, I've got OpenShot Video Editor, I have Lightworks, the free version, and I have Shotcut. So I started off in downloading OpenShot Video Editor. And I like the way that you can do timelines with OpenShot. It's uh, quite nice to be able to add track, uh, remove track below, rename track. And when you put video in the, the track itself, it's quite nice to be able to mute the sound. Uh, and I accidentally just clicked on something, but it's okay. It only kills all of the CPU on the server with this program. I'll just move over to some of the other tracks. So I did set up a whole video. It took me probably three hours simply because it uh, kills CPU every time that you try to preview something on this machine. It is very choppy. You cannot even watch the video really. But it does give some uh, ability, capability to very easily do things such as put your volume level to certain um, thresholds to be able to put a clip over the top of another clip. So if you have a bunch of short clips, like I have up here in, uh, in my project, you can put the short clips without sound, cut the sound off of them, and then just keep the audio going on your main or your primary clip recording below that. So for OpenShot Video Editor, when I did an export, I finally spent all the time to get the video track together I did an export. After about two hours, it became unresponsive uh, for good, as what I'm going to call it, because it was about 30 minutes where it just wouldn't go off of 60-something uh, percent, 62 or 64 percent uh, completion. So overall, I ruled out OpenShot Video Editor not not that I have any problems with the user interface itself. I think it's quite nice, but because my computer cannot process the the videos that are being played. The videos format that I use is an MP4, but it's, uh, well, I wouldn't say raw value, like a uh, raw value, like some of the, some of the real, real very, uh, ooh, excuse me, very high grade video cameras. Uh, I use a Get Up Get Pro 2 that I had uh, another couple reviews on. I love playing around with that little toy. And then I've got a Moto G5 Plus. So those are my two cameras. They take video where about a 10 minute video could be a gigabyte and a half. And I just can't do much anything with this video editor when it starts to play. Uh, push the play button. I'll see if I can even record anything or... Um, It'll kill my CPU, and it immediately killed my CPU at 100%. So I sure hope this is still recording. I'm going to try and both pause that, and I'm going to shut down OpenShot Video Editor. Uh, the formats for exporting are a bit limited, but it would give you everything that you need, so long as you have a computer that can actually do anything, and it's pretty much pegged. So... I'm going to close that one down and go right into Lightworks, hoping that you can actually still see my screen. So I tried out Lightworks, and the thing that I wanted to do with Lightworks is you could have playback on some very large videos very easily. And when I imported my project, uh, my project files, I should say, I was able to do the playback on these files very easily. However, the user interface Although, yes, I've been working with Adobe Premiere Pro in the past and other um, video editing programs like it, the user interface is just too far off for me. It's not intuitive. I can't figure out how to add a new track, a new video track. There seem to be far too many limitations with this. And quite honestly, 
I'm not going to show you too much with this because I never completed a project. I never got a proper timeline established to give me something good for video editing. So going into checking and seeing if my computer is completely pegged, it still is. Uh, I found Shotcut. Now Shotcut, as you can see on the screen, hopefully, uh, I've got a nice timeline established. It's very easy to add tab uh, timelines, add audio tracks, add video tracks, insert, remove tracks. Uh, it also has an ability right off to mute a full track, make a track invisible so I can work with just the audio or just the visual. I can stack quite a few tracks on top of each other. And one of the other things that I really liked that uh, OpenShot did not is I could stack uh, monochrome letters. So here I'm using uh, GIMP, which having used Photoshop for years, GIMP is something to adjust to, but it's, it's usable for, for some of the basics. I can take some sort of a monochrome exported PNG and I can overlay words on top of what I'm doing. And it's quite nice to be able to do that. So I've got a playlist of the things that I just drag and drop files into my playlist. I stack them on top of each other. I can edit the timelines very easily. And the most important of things is Although playback is a little bit jittery here or there when I have a few stacked layers, I can actually use the video service and thankfully my CPU has dropped. So what we're just going to do here is close open shot editor uh, and we're going to close Lightworks as well because both of them still have a draw uh, on CPU and resources. <clears throat> Lightworks also takes a, a while to start up or close. So here I have my edited projects and I've made three videos so far with, with, uh, with Shotcut. Uh, I'm quite impressed for a freeware. I like it quite a bit for a Windows, uh, Windows application. It's been working pretty well. There have been a couple of times where I just needed to close it down because I'll be trying to drag and drop something into one of the timelines. And instead of allowing me to drag and drop something in there, it'll just give me the uh, no, no sign, the little circle with the cross through it. Uh, but, um, Playback works pretty well, except I said, uh, when you stack clips, you can tell it's a bit jittery, but at least this is something that I can work with. Uh, the other, the other programs that I've been working with, I couldn't do much anything with it. Once you get into non-stack uh, clips, if you heard the difference there, it starts to pick up. So I can review and playback video. I know that it's not going to be jittery, jittery in the export. What I've found out that if I have a timeline around 10 minutes long that has a few layers, a few different levels going to it, uh, quite a few different things clipped and overlapped to one another, the export time can be around an hour or a little bit more in some cases. This particular case, it took about an hour and a half in order for it to export. And that's actually quite all right for my needs. So I am going to try and keep this a little bit short. I recommend Shotcut between the three different platforms. Uh, two of the other, uh, three of the other tools that I use in uh, video editing. I'm going to be using OBS here and I'll, I'll uh, hopefully be getting playback after that CPU boost. And then I use GIMP and I'm able to use monochrome overlays. I have learned that if I do something that is not monochrome overlay, if I add some sort of details or uh, features in the PNG, even though I export it in the same format, it will not overlay properly. It will actually have a black screen behind it. So if you are like me, you're looking for a open source or free video editing software, I'm definitely going to point uh, you towards Shotcut if you are on a Windows machine. I hope you have a great day.